So before I start any speech to any audience, I really like to meet them first before. So I have a quick warm up task for you. At the count of three, please say your name out loud. Don't worry about the noise, it's just a warm up task. Are you ready? One, two, three. Okay. Wonderful, my name is Mateusz. I'm more than pleased to welcome you here as I'm co responsible for this event. So I'm more happy to see all of the new faces. I would like to express my gratitude uh, to my wonderful team and you to create this wonderful event. Okay, so first of all, I would like to give you the essence of what this speech is actually about. And it's basically about two things. To always question why you're doing what you're doing and how does it make you feel and why are you feeling what you're feeling. So I heard one name, Haruki, right? Okay, if you could tell me, would you be able to speak in front of 1,000 people? Probably not. Okay, fair enough. Well, you can speak to one person, right? Obviously. And if you were to speak in front of 1,000 individuals, would that be doable? Yeah. So Haruki now became a public speaker. Round of applause to Haruki. <laughs> well, obviously, it's much more complex than that because speaking to one person, you don't have the stress, etc. But you can deal with it with something called emotional intelligence. So let's get basically to what it really means. So, familiar, maybe. Inside Out is a great uh, movie to actually uh, display what you feel. So we have the basic emotions. So we have fear, sadness, disgust, happiness, anger. And obviously, well, we often get you know, controlled by our emotion. But it doesn't usually work for advantage. But matter of fact, we can actually um, get you know, the positive side of getting things out of emotions. So have anyone ever experienced this type of emotion called joke? I believe by name it doesn't ring a bell, but if you read to the definition, it may be more familiar. So I can imagine that on the way here, on the way here, I would actually experience it. So basically, the hypothetical conversation that you compulsively play out in your head. You experience it, for example, in the shower. Usually, that's the place where it occurs. So besides, you know, all of the fundamental emotions, you also experience the ones that are less, mm -hmm. less popular. For example. Adrenaline, another emotion that involves the frustration with how long it takes to get to someone, yeah. get to know them better. And obviously, uh, I really adore the moment when I click, when I click with a person and I can basically skip all the awkward part of trying to you know, talk about the weather, the film you watched recently. And obviously, it's not always the case, but emotions play a good role. And now, to get a sense of emotions in general, we also use facial expressions. Which, well, in my case, to be honest, all I can know is that I use number three too much, and that I usually should stay, you know, uh, not around people that use number two too much. And the rest, honestly, it's a game of personal interpretation. So obviously, they help us massively to get to know what the people uh, experience. But matter of fact, facial expressions aren't usually uh, as simple as we would like them to be. So. Moving forward, intelligence, because we're talking about emotional intelligence. That's a topic on its own, and it's too broad to discuss in detail. However, not everyone can be, have the title to that they actually have intelligence, but that's a part. Because usually, you know, you can hear things like, he's smart, but not intelligent, etc. But intelligence, in an essence, is basically even more complex than you can imagine. And just to get, you know, a sense of what it really is, uh, you can have such a broad variety and basically it's difficult to even sometimes position yourself in one or the other. But when you connect the two, you get emotional intelligence, which probably you ring the bell, probably had something like the ability to understand what you feel and what others feel. But to get actually the actual picture of that is you also have to include the ability to assess the situation correctly. So basically, what is the situation trying to teach me? And what is the emotion we're going to use to actually cope with it? So I quickly picked up on this topic and introduced many positions that are worth you know, exploring. However, well, it's in essence, is the combination of social skills, self-awareness, self-regulation, empathy, motivation. However, a quick disclaimer, we often see those gurus, for example, on the internet, that tell you what to do, how to do, how to be motivated, uh, what to do in your free time. And they usually have social skills maxed out and it's quite a deceptive uh, trait as 
you would be surprised by how many people, successful people in the world, do not have relevant social skills, but still are capable to deliver, well, very important knowledge. So just for your own understanding, if you are not the person that is very outspoken or speaks a lot and has the same social skills, it doesn't really determine your ability to be emotionally intelligent. And now courage. Well, obviously it could be a topic on its own when it comes to the TEDx, but I would like to leave you with you know, courage as one of those elements that can bring you to the next level. I remember that, his, that day when I picked up on acting. Uh, I believe I was 13 more or less. I had neither courage nor emotional intelligence, but I decided, well, it might be the way to go, at least for the class future. And I remember I walked in the audition room. There were four adults in front of me, and they said, I'm happy you just got a dog. I was like, well, I know how to act happy you to be smile. I know how to you know, get a dog. So every day I thought it was going to be much easier. And that night, I haven't received a call that I got the job. And it's, you know, progressed for the next two weeks or so from audition room to audition room for about three hours each time I was supposed to sit in front uh, of the audition room and I wouldn't simply get the jobs. But then one day when I believe it was about one month later, I got a task to be Ah, that I got the information that I have a newborn sister. And at that age, it's quite ambiguous for a 14 year old should I be happy or should I be terrified? So I have 50% 50, 50 of actually getting it right. So I played out the emotion. I tried to do my best. I had the prompt before, uh, one hour before, to actually visualize what it takes and what should I actually perform. And at that point, I knew maybe that's the way to go to actually deconstruct. The situation is not only in the terms of the six fundamental we just seen, but maybe there is much more to the person uh, that I'm supposed to play. And life went on, other commercials uh, were progressing, uh, and I always lived with this strange idea that, well, what if I actually have a different approach? What if I, for example, and that's what I did exactly, sign up for an acting class? Just, you know, for my experiment, and I recommend it honestly to anyone. You don't have to be the next Hollywood star just for your ability to actually look within yourself and, you know, how you would assess the situation. And for the next time, uh, for the next more or less three months, I would go to those classes. I would deconstruct situations like acting like I was just divorced after 20 years, which how am I supposed to know? I'm not even 20 plus being 20 years after the marriage. Well, I had no idea how to act. But I could build a sense of what are the emotions, what is the combination of you know, the experiences behind it, and gradually actually built uh, confidence. And here, I may be smiling, but that's my 12th ice cream on that day. And honestly, I wasn't uh, smiling a lot longer after that cut me. But my whole idea is that acting helped me a lot, honestly. And it's, uh, you can apply to every day life situations, no matter if it's business, I absolutely love business, but even more, I love people behind it. And really, well, it's, uh, it's really redirected my efforts towards basically anything I would do in every day. I would speak to people, I would connect, I would interact. And then I joined charity, something that taught me more than the whole acting career I could have ever imagined. I, I reunited with people that were, well, led with passion that when the most difficult situations I could ever imagine are basically on the edge or, or almost when it comes to you know, health, basically. Children that were the most diligent, the most bright, and basically they were full of happiness even though they had to go against all of the odds. And this taught me that obviously you may go different path. You can you know, try acting, you can, you can actually uh, learn about emotional intelligence, but the best thing you can do for yourself is actually get into the experience around people, environment, somewhere where you will find people and actually test your emotional intelligence. Not about, you know, how you're going to do better or worse. It's more about getting the experience and getting to know with people. That will basically provide you with the experience. So I would like to give you another story about uh, Jacek, from Jacek Valkiewicz about one of his speeches. He said that uh, about a story about two people they sit in a bus, one says to another, wow, you bought a ticket. So, yeah, obviously, I buy a ticket. I, I don't want to get caught. 
And then he pulled out another ticket and says, why on earth would you buy the second ticket? Well, in case I lose the first one. And he had progressed and, count, and he pulled out the first ticket. And I was like, oh, he's an idiot. Why would you ever want to buy three tickets? Well, because if I lose the two, I have the third one. And then he thought to himself, well, what if you lose the third one? Well, I already bought the monthly one, so it doesn't matter. So is this a situation where, obviously, you can try to prepare, get a framework of emotional intelligence to approach the situation with always with calmness and get, you know, this courage needed to actually voice what you feel to the, per to the people that are actually going to listen, but you may not always be prepared for all of the difficulties in life. So thank you so much for the speech today. I hope you're going to be, uh, you're going to have ideas for spreading. Since I really love to uh, interconnect people and give them the room, what I told you about the experiences, I created the Salon Inspiration, which is a place you can sign up for. It's going to be next week. And if you would like to meet new people in the realm of business, psychology, and passion, that's the place to go. So thank you so much for your attention. That's all.